everybody, thanks for joining me. Joe coming to you from Valley of the Gods near Mexican Hat, Utah. But today what we're going to do is stitch a panoramic from Fisher Towers in Moab. That's where I was last week. When you're stitching together a panoramic, there's a lot of things to take into consideration, like where's the subject, where's the light coming from? Something that also happens is when you're shooting a panorama with a circular polarizer, as you pan from left to right, you're gonna see differences in the sky and the foreground as far as light and color goes. And that can be very distracting. So we're gonna take a collection of images, stitch them together, and then do an edit to bring down the highlights and make sure the focus stays on the primary subject of the scene. Let's get it done. Hey everybody, Joe here, and we're going to deal with some issues when you're shooting panoramics. And this is a follow-up for our Photo Friday article on why shooting panoramics are good for you. And what I experienced, uh, as did some of the people here that are out on our photo workshop, is that when you're shooting a panoramic with a polarizer, you have a big color and light change as you rotate away from the sun or towards the sun. And that's what we're gonna deal with in this pano. So I've got a big pano stitch here. I've got five shots and we're going to stitch these together. So let's actually, before we do that, let's pick one of the ones in the middle. So here's one, two, three, four, five. Let's pick this one in the middle, bring that up. This is of a beautiful place called Fisher Towers. And actually, even in this frame, we have, you can see, darker to lighter left to right. So this is showing what's going on. So let's go into the develop module and we'll go to basics. What are the problems? Well, the shadows are too dark, so I'm just gonna cut to the chase. Ah, maybe a little too much. Bring them up a bit. I'm gonna bring the highlights all the way down and that's already helped a lot. Color-wise, yeah, the color's a little off maybe, but you know what, we'll, we'll deal with that more. Well, let's do a little basic presence, add a little bit of texture, a little bit of clarity. I don't think the foreground needs dehaze, but the, the sky's gonna need it. Actually, the whole thing benefits from a little. I was wrong, so let's go ahead and add that. Saturation and vibrance both look pretty good. Let's see what happens if we add a little. Vibrance, yeah, that vibrance is designed to increase the saturation of cool and desaturated colors, and you can see how it affects the blue. So let's add a little bit to that. I don't think saturation right now. Yeah, that's making, oh, a little bit. Okay, I, I admit it, that's okay. Now we started with that and we're here. So that looks pretty good. So let's select all of the images in the stitch and click on sync. And I just want check all, I want everything to be done. So I click synchronize and it will apply those settings to all the images. And we can scroll through and see how they look. That side's getting a little dark, that side's very dark. So what, that's, what that means is we're getting close to 90 degrees away from the sun, which is where the polarizer is at its strongest. Where on the other side, you can see how much lighter it is. So let's go ahead up to photo, photo merge, panorama. Now there are, three, there are three different kinds of stitching projections here, spherical, cylindrical, and perspective. I think you're gonna find that 90%, 95% of the time you're gonna use cylindrical, so just stick with that. Also, I shot this with a panoramic head, and Lightroom is making assumptions that I was not rotating on the nodal point while I was, and that's why it kind of built in these curves here. I'm going to override that by using the boundary warp and pull that out. Now that's gonna straighten everything out and you can see we've got now a little bit of perspective distortion. And I saw this when I took the shots, so I know that existed. We'll fix that when we get it back into Lightroom. So that looks pretty good. Let's click on merge. There's also more of the image than I need, but we'll crop again, we'll do that later. So let's go ahead and stitch it together and see how it looks. All right, so we've got our stitch. I really don't need the left side of the screen, so let's close that panel so we have more room to play. And there we go, there's all of the images stitched together. Too dark on the right and lower, too light up top. So let's go ahead and fix this. First of all, let's fix the perspective, it's bothering me. This, this thing here should be fairly straight up and down. So we're gonna scroll down to transform and go to vertical transform and watch as I pull it off to the left, everything straightens out and that looks better. And it fixes the perspective. It makes things a little bit taller, which they should have been. And while we're doing that, we have the X offset. You can see I've got X left and right if I wanna move things and I've got Y to move them up and down. I know I don't want this entire bottom. I wanna keep as much sky as I can. So I'm going to go with that. 
And I'm not going to crop yet. I'm just going to leave it alone and live with that. In fact, we can bring up the crop tool now, which is the R key. I know I don't want so much on the bottom because it makes the formations here look too small. So let's go ahead and I'm going to bring that up to about there. I'm going to leave all the sky for now and then I'll bring in from the right and a little bit in from the left. Again, we're probably going to crop this again and hit enter. Now you could say you're done, but there, there's still some compositional issues and some lighting issues here. First of all, we have the primary tower. Again, this is a place called Fisher Towers and this one is called the Titan. But it's not highlighted because this thing behind it. Also, notice how the sky goes from light to dark. So I'm going to deal with the foreground first. So I'm going to get the linear gradient tool. I won't go to this menu again because if you look here, you can see linear gradient is M, brush is K, radial gradient is shift M. You're going to use these all the time on panoramics, so you might as well learn the keyboard shortcuts. Saves you from going here. So linear gradient, and I'm going to drag from the bottom left up. Now the way this linear gradient works is everything from the red behind it will be changed at 100% of whatever slider I move. That fades from 100 to 50% with the black square, and then from 50% to zero it fades out. Now I just want to deal with the foreground right now. I don't want to start with the sky. So I'm going to scroll down just a little bit and tell it I want to subtract from this with the sky. I just want to take the sky out of that selection. And this is really cool. Look, it just has the foreground now. So what's the problem? The highlights are too bright. So let's bring the highlights down. I can open up the deep shadows, but the highlights are still a little bit too bright for me. So I'm going to bring the actual overall exposure down. I want to get it closer to this tower. And as I'm doing that, you know what? This thing is still a little bit too bright and maybe a little too saturated. So I'm going to hit enter on this and hit K, which is the brush tool. I've got auto mask selected. That will keep everything from going into the sky. Just as a quick demo, if I turn off auto mask and get a, a brush here, if I start painting over this, notice it goes up into the sky. We don't want that. What I want is auto mask on. Then when I paint in here, notice I can come right up to the sky and it doesn't affect it. And this particular color, I want to actually desaturate it a little bit and bring it down. So let's bring the exposure down a little more. Ah, there we go. It's starting to look like the rest of the thing. Bring the highlights down. And I'm all gonna also going to take a little bit of saturation out. Because as we darkened it, it got a little bit too prominent. And the whole goal, again, is to make this uh, more the centerpiece of the image. Okay, that looks a lot better. Now let's deal with the sky. Again, the sky is lighter here than it is over here. So we will select the sky with Create New Mask. And you click on here, you see plus Create New Mask, select sky. And that gives us the entire sky. But I don't want to affect the sky over here. And if you want to temporarily hide the mask, hit the O key, which stands for overlay. And I can see I want to affect right up to about the tower. So I'm going to tell it, just give me the intersect of the mask with a linear gradient. So only the linear gradient, where the linear gradient and the sky are both happening, will be selected. So I'm going to start here and drag across again, and you can see what it is picking. And that's about, remember I want it to fade out, I think about right there. That looks great. So while I've got this selected, I'm going to bring the exposure down a little bit. And look at that. Look how it, it now matches the color. Maybe I don't want to match it exactly. I don't want it to look fake. I'll leave it go a little bit lighter, but just not quite as light as it was. And that looks awesome. Great. So what else? The back of the lower right over here is a little too dark. This is still a little too light. And my tower is, is still not as prominent as I would like. So I'm going to get a K, the brush again. This time I'm going to turn off Auto Mask because I just wanted to select everywhere kind of down in here. And you don't have to be precise with this all the time. Then I'm going to increase the exposure. Let's get that up. That looks a lot better. And again, over here, I'm going to hit K again because this area down here, I actually want to darken it. I think something like that. So let's bring the exposure down on that part. 
I'm going to cut the contrast down on it too. Now, just to see where we've where we started and where we've come so far, I'm going to hit Command apostrophe or Control apostrophe on a Windows machine and create a virtual copy of the image we're working on, and then I'm going to reset it. And you'll see we started there, and now we're here, looking a heck of a lot better. So let's talk about this image compositionally. I've got the main tower dead center. That's not good. And this stuff, while mildly interesting, isn't really telling the story of the place. It's actually a distraction. Because it's lighter, you go here. So I'm going to start cropping. I'm going to hit the R key, which is crop. And I'm just going to eyeball this. I'm going to take a little bit less of the bottom. And I'm going to come all the way over to this point. And I'm actually, I've got the rule of thirds, uh, the, I'm sorry, the uh, golden ratio set up on my tool here, my cropping tool, which by the way is right here. Crop guide overlay minus set for golden ratio rather than rule of thirds. I find it works much better for landscapes. That's looking better. I'm even going to make it a little thinner. And notice how as we cut away the other stuff in the image that the things we want become more prominent. I'm going to, I'm going to be brutal. Be, be merciless in your cropping. I think, yeah, I think something about like that. Look at how much stronger that image is now. Now the towers are much more prominent. And I'm going to help them along even a little bit more. I'm going to hit the K key again. Make sure Auto Mask is on. And I'm going to select the primary tower down through there. And th some of the other light spots. I'm going to brighten these up just in the places that are brighter. And we're going to make them even a little brighter. So let's go to Exposure and bring that up. And look how that just adds a little bit more life to it. While we're at it, I'm going to increase the contrast and bring down the blacks a little bit, which will also increase the contrast. So now what we're doing is just subliminally adding a little bit more light to that. And I think we're almost done. So I'm going to hit Enter a couple of times and then scroll all the way down to Effects. And under effects, I'm going to use what's called post-crop vignetting. My default number is about minus 12. Something about like that. Now, if I hit the eyeball here, you'll see the before and after. So there's without the vignette, there's with the vignette. Much stronger. But you don't even notice it if you, if you stop looking at it for a bit. Now, if I wanted this to exactly fit in a frame, I could go up and crop specifically to that shape. I don't usually like to do that, but let's see what we've got. What does this look like? Oh, I don't know. What do you think? Legal size, maybe? 14 by 8.5? Let's see if that, how that works. So if I choose this, and there was a little bit of movement, but that's a standard frame size, as is 11 by 17, which is even a little more square. 11 by 17 takes away a little bit too much, so let's back off. Yes, we're converting our panoramic into an 11 by 17 just to see what it looks like as an option, and that's not bad. And the beauty of cropping in Lightroom is that the crop follows the new image size. So if again, if I hold down the light, or the eyeball here, you can see our vignette has followed the image. While we're here, let's just try another crop. Command apostrophe. Again, one of the beauties of having virtual copies in Lightroom, this time I'm just going to eyeball it what I think is going to look nice. So I'm going to turn off the lock here, and let's try, let's try something interesting. We're going to really make a pano of this. What happens if we come in this way? Can I get that tower out of the center? I'm going to make it really panoramic looking. Maybe something like that. And that see, that makes it right dead center. Let's come the other way. Not perfect. The tower is a little bit too close to center, but it's still interesting. It's an interesting way to present the image. So let's go ahead and see what it is we've ended up with. We'll start. Let's start with our raw file. Let that draw in. Okay, there's our raw file. There's our edit, and that looks really pretty amazing. And this is an 11 by 17 now, so this is a standard frame size. By the way, uh, just as a side note, I shoot the, the OM system cameras, the former Olympus cameras. This is shot with the OM-1. And one thing you, you should pay attention to is that Lightroom doesn't treat raw files equally. Some camera systems, the raw file processing isn't as good. But if you want to see, I'm going to look, zoom in at 100%. Look at how sharp everything is. So Lightroom, 
and Adobe Camera Raw both do absolutely amazing jobs converting the raw files from the OM cameras. I'm blown away. And by the way, take notice, I never did any sharpening. This is just the way it's processed out of the camera. Very cool. Anyway, a little side note. Okay, so that I'm very happy with that. That looks awesome. Let's take a look at our real pano view. It's interesting. I, this particular scene, I don't like it as much because there's too much over here on the left-hand side that isn't as interesting as the stuff on the right. Maybe if we cropped this kind of closer to what we had, maybe something like that, that would work. Let's see how that looks. I could live with that if I really wanted the pano feel, but I still think that I like our 11 by 17 in this case the best. So anyway, just some of the great tools that are easy to use, but very powerful in the way that you can make selections with those intersections and the subtractions when using the gradients. It's such a handy tool and it makes really things that were previously very difficult to do very easy. So that was kind of deep. We have, I want to explore this some more. We're going to do another one soon. And I thank you for joining me today. Till next time, be well, and I'll see you online soon. Bye-bye. So we ended up with a couple of really nice panoramic croppings from the same image. And that's also something you should consider. Don't just do one crop. Try different things and see how it affects the image. So that's it for today. Thanks for joining me, and I'll see you online again soon. Till next time, have a great week. Bye-bye.